So they're really funny if one of them just went <laughs> everyone, it's Brittany with Green Bee Flowers. If you are new to our channel, we are a 2.5 acre, fifth year, cut flower farm and retail floral location in small town, southwestern Ontario. You can help our channel by hitting that subscribe button, liking our content, and of course, leaving a comment if you have any questions. So in this video, we are going to be going through our flower subscription process. Uh, we have to finish picking for the subscriptions. It's our second week of our spring flower subscriptions. They go out every other week from the beginning of April until the end of May, meaning they get five subscriptions total. So this week we are going to be putting in tulips, ranunculus, green bee grown hyacinth, as well as specialty daffodils. And these bouquets are going to be beautiful. We are going to go out into the rain and finish picking the stuff that we need for these subscriptions. And then we will be dropping everything off to the store. Megan and Jen are going to be putting those subscriptions together and uh, they are going to be going out to our flower subscribers tomorrow. So first things first, we're going to make our way to the back greenhouse. Forgot a crate, so I'm gonna grab one of those. We have a whole bunch of white tulips. Oh, listen to the birds this morning. It's a really nice thing about weather like this is it's a little cooler. It's a cardinal up. Oh, he just flew away. It's really nice having weather like this cooler it's much easier to work even if it is wet just don't feel quite so haha -ha. <laughs> anyways it's so nice to have weather that's just a little cooler it makes it a lot easier to work in and uh, it's so nice just to hear the birds enjoying all the rain as well so this crate of tulips here is the one I'm going to be starting to pick from and then there's also a crate over in the other greenhouse that I'm going to grab from as well. And when I do subscriptions, I'm actually counting out the exact amount of everything that we need to put into them. Uh, because these are recipes that are specific to the subscription bouquets. So they're not something that we're recreating in the store. Um, these are unique bouquets. The goal is to have as many of them uh, filled with all flowers we grow as possible. Uh, so this week we've got Hakun tulips in it. We have some of the Darwin series, the, um, the Nike, uh, Mystic the Nikes, the Apricot and the Salmon. Uh, tulips in them as well and then white ranunculus and some beautiful long stemmed buttery yellow and white hyacinth so I think these are going to be really beautiful I'm excited to see how the girls put them all together uh, and I hope our subscribers really like them all right just heading to the other greenhouse now, the tulips that I have back here are actually the same variety as what I have in the crate already, which is gonna make it really easy for the girls when they're putting them together. The difference is that the ones that are in here are like a day further along. Uh, so by staggering the blooms like that, it's actually going to give the customer a little bit more of a enjoyable flower experience, right? One of the main things you wanna make sure you're doing every time is giving them blooms that are gonna last them you know, hopefully as close to those two weeks as possible. And so by staggering how open the tulips are, they're gonna get to enjoy the bloom out of those tulips longer.
Now you can also see behind me there all of these beautiful ranunculus that are ready to go. So I'm gonna pick those next. I need 13 steps. Because it's raining, I'm gonna leave my crate in here. I'm gonna go and pick the hyacinths. So you get to come with me. And then we'll bring the uh, stems back. Now I have another succession. We've picked most of the hyacinths now at the farm, but I have another succession here. And the ones that we have picked from the farm are actually in the cooler. Um, so they are going to be for Mother's Day. Trying to stockpile blooms in the fridge um, so that we have them ready to go. Hyacinths will be okay in the cooler for a couple weeks, but the ones that I have here, uh, because the weather was so warm, what I want to do is grab these out um, and send them in for the subscriptions. So let's get those picked. busy um, digging out peonies from our backyard at the moment. Um, <laughs> so because Annie's little and she plays hard, uh, gardens that the other two were better at not touching, uh, she is now in the process of destroying. And I have a lot of really old <laughs> Peony. And by old, I mean like we've been in this house seven years, so they're like seven years old. But they are established peony plants, and um, we're digging those out and bringing those to the farm and putting some of them in the front yard so that uh, the Flumpenstein of Destructor, well, possibly not Destructor, are peonies. Because I'd like to be able to harvest from them as they happen to be really nice peonies. I have added some additional weather protection and as it is, uh, it's quite rainy. But I love the rain. We put in about 500 seedlings of um, Larkspur yesterday. So it's actually really, really good uh, that we are getting this rain because the Larkspur likes to put in deep top roots. And so this is really gonna encourage them to go down nice and deep for water and nutrients, as everybody likes. So I've gone ahead and rinsed off these hyacinths. So there is a good you know, 10 to 12 inches on these. They're not as tall as our other flowers, but once you cut those bulbs down here, uh, we will be able to incorporate those into the bouquets. Uh, and the girls know how to do that at the store. All right, so when you're doing the hyacinths, kind of cut it away from yourself. Mm. Watch the end here, because it's gonna get a little, it's a little harder to cut through, because it's thicker. You don't want to get caught and uh, yeah. rip the whole bulb off. So what you can do is you take it, like you're peeling an apple or a potato. Okay. It's clear off the end. And then you can carve it down a bit so it's not so chonky in the arrangements. Yeah, the sharper the knife, the easier it is.
it's now about uh, one o'clock. Oh no, 1.30 in the afternoon on Thursday. And um, we've dropped the flowers off. We just dropped the flowers off at the store. Um, but Nick is on his way to take little man and to emerge. Uh, he has been at therapy school in London this week, which is great. Um, however, he's been really mucusy and he, anyways, he likely has an infection essentially. So they're on their way. Uh, he was transported via EMS to the hospital, Emerge, Children's Emerge. And I don't talk a lot about kind of, you know, the special needs side of our lives very much. I try really hard to keep as much of our content on here, just in the farming aspect of it as much as possible. And I think, you know, it's it's hard because, you know, flowers really are very happy um, and picking flowers is therapeutic. And, you know, part of what we try to, or I try to do on this channel is have a really good sense of humor through all of the legitimate growing pains that is owning a flower farm. But there's a whole other side of our lives that involves being parents to a special needs child with a life limiting diagnosis. And the reality of our flower farming life is that we have to be able to drop everything anytime he has a medical episode, which is frequently, right? You know, I think that I don't, I don't talk a lot about this because you know, it's, it's part one. I, I don't necessarily like having Joseph on the channel. I think that, you know, flower farming and this YouTube channel is kind of a way for me to have that life outside of just being his parent. And I also think it's important to remember that we are special needs parents and there is a whole second part of our life that definitely affects the content that you're going to see here. And not to say we're not going to do our best to, you know, make those blooms grow and harvest and all of the pretty things, but I, I do want you guys to be aware, especially because there's so many of you that are new to the channel. Thank you, by the way. But I, I, I think I want you guys to be aware that this part of our life does exist. Um, and it's not like it's a once a year kind of event for us. This is the second time in a month we've had to take the tiny human to emerge. Uh, whether it's been for, you know, his seizure activity or his infection, an infection, or he has a, he has something, part of his genetic diagnosis, he also has something called trachea malaysia, which is essentially the doctor's way of describing it as he has a floppy airway. So he cannot clear infections and clear mucus the same way the rest of us can, which means oftentimes there's builds up in the back of his throat and that turns into sign. Anyways, it's a whole thing. Um, and you forget like we have home nursing so we will start by saying yay thank you we have wonderful support and I'm super grateful for that uh, we are very very lucky to have as many doctors and nurses and organizations following him as we do those in-home supports that we have are so fundamentally necessary to you know us even be able being able to farm to begin with but the other side of that you know we have nursing in our home every single night, uh, which we're very thankful for, but it is, you know, it's another person home every single night while you sleep. And, you know, Joseph has nurses that go to school with him. And these are, these are wonderful things, but it's just, it's so many 
people all the time that need to be notified every time he, you know, goes to the hospital. Whereas like, normally a family takes their kid to the hospital and then they take them home and they let them rest and you keep an eye on them. You know, we have to call the home care agency and the school and you know we were supposed to have a meeting today to go over his IEP so that got canceled and that's the whole school board people that were involved with that so now that has to be rescheduled I've been on a video call with a neurology doctor this morning and uh like it just it's it is a never-ending chain of phone calls um so anyways I just I wanted to update you on that I, we know that, you know, in this circumstance, he is go more than likely going to be completely fine. It's annoying more than anything. He essentially is so congested that his O2 saturations aren't up where they need to be. And so he is on supplemental O2. And so the doctor decided at therapy school he's at right now that decided that they wanted to transport him via EMS to the hospital. And my husband has dropped everything so he can go and look after Joseph. And I am kind of here doing all the background work with like calling all the people to let them know that the appointments for the next like four days, because there's also like seven of those have changed. Um, which is why we have staff. <laughs> it is why we had to hire staff, right? You look at a business, like many of the farmers that are you know, on, on YouTube right now. And you, I see a lot of them hustling. And while I'm like, I love that for them, that is not something that we can implement into our lifestyle because of our child. So I just wanted to kind of update you all. Um, cause this was, this video was supposed to be happy and exciting and picking flowers and making subscriptions. And I'm very thankful because I do believe that Jenna is still doing the photography of, and the videography of how they are, you know, putting the subscriptions together. Um, but our life changes really quickly. And this is part of the green bee floral life. So, I mean, I do enjoy trying to, you know, show Joseph once in a while and so you guys can experience, you know, some of his joy. So when the little kid isn't as joyful as usual is usually when you know something's wrong. So we are going to deal with that today. Um, and I'm sure he'll be fine, but I'll give you an update uh, a little bit later on that. So... bloomed we're not putting those in the hand tides but we will be putting some nice closed ones so they can open up and people can enjoy them It's Thursday night. Um, I'm headed to the hospital now because they are admitting our son overnight. Um, it sounds like he has pneumonia. Um, so 
he, he, my husband is gonna stay overnight with him and then I will go tomorrow to spend the day. Um, and that's where we're at, so. All right, so it is now Friday morning. Uh, Joseph was admitted to hospital overnight. And uh, so I'm on my way back shortly. <laughs> And he's just gonna bark in the background, so we're gonna roll with this. And uh, I will, I guess, update you guys when I update you. Um, but I'm gonna leave the video here. Um, he's gonna be okay. He had a, he is better this morning than he was last night. Um, so we are trending upwards, which is good. Um, it's just that this is one of the reasons why. it's always going to be a little different on our channel. So anyways, thank you for watching and for any well wishes. And I hope that you have a better week than I have had the last couple days. Bye guys.